Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Kindly turn with me in your Bibles to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Turn to your neighbor, look into the eyes, and say he is alive. Uh, it seems we have so many people waiting in the foyer looking for spaces. So, if next to you, there's an empty chair, kindly raise your hand for me. There's an empty chair next to you, raise your hand. Okay. Luke 24. Luke 24, I begin reading from verse 1. Luke 24, verse 1. Now, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and seven other women with them came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Tell your neighbor, the stone is rolled away. Say like you mean it. And as you say that, may every stone over your challenge be rolled away this morning in the name of Jesus. May every stone that has been placed over your breakthrough roll away in the name of Jesus. Verse 3. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Then, as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Father, we honor you in the name of Jesus for resurrection power. Thank you that we have not put our faith into fables and stories, but that we have come to know you, the living God. This morning we celebrate the triumph over death. We celebrate the completion of our salvation. We celebrate the soon coming King. We celebrate the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Father, I ask for grace this morning that in simplicity, I might declare your truth to your people in the name of Jesus. And God's people shall say, Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to share with us briefly on the subject, the resurrection, and what it means to us, very briefly. You see, beloved, the truth of the resurrection is that it is a cornerstone of the Christian faith. It is the center or the central truth of the gospel. Theories over the authenticity of Christ's resurrection have come and gone. But none has been able to disprove the resurrection. Because the accounts in the New Testament make it quite clear. That Jesus was arrested, judged as a criminal and was crucified. His side was pierced. And John tells us that when the soldier pierced the side, water and blood gushed out, separated from each other to signify that Jesus truly 
died. Because there are these people known as the Gnostics who strongly believe that on the day of the crucifixion, uh, the, the, the Christ left and what was left on the, on the cross was not Jesus himself. And there are those also who strongly believe that the body was taken away from the tomb. And there were those also who strongly believe that the one who died on the cross was not Jesus. Then also those who believe that Jesus did not die at all. But the accounts in the New Testament make it clear that Jesus died. And when he died, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, paving the way for you and I to have that boldness of access into the presence of the Lord because of the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, you don't need a prophet to lead you to God. Oh, you are here? You don't know somebody to take money from you and try to coerce you by telling you that without me, your predicament or whatever you find yourself in will not work. When Jesus died, the curtain was torn into two from top to the bottom. Matthew tells us in Matthew 27, 51 to 52, Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. And the earth quaked. The earth quaked because the creator of the heavens and the earth himself was on that cross. And the Bible says, and the rocks were split. There is so much power in that blood. Amen. That when that blood even hit the rocks, when Jesus said it is finished, the rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, signifying the power of the resurrection. That those that have died in Christ, death no longer has domain and authority over them in the name of Jesus. You see, not only did Jesus die, but the body of Jesus in accordance with Jewish burial custom was wrapped in linen cloth. About 110 pounds of aromatic spices mixed together to form a sticky paste were applied to the wrappings of the cloth around the body. The body was placed in a solid rock tomb and an extremely large stone was rolled against the entrance of the tomb. Because the Jews, the Sanhedrin, had told Pilate that when he was alive, Jesus had said that on the third day he would rise up. Therefore, we want to make sure that we want you, Pilate, to make sure that the disciples don't go and take the body away and say he's risen. And Pilate said to them, do it yourselves. So in the company of soldiers, they went, the tomb was sealed. And you know, when a tomb is sealed, in those days, any attempt to break that uh, a tomb would affect the seal. And to touch a Roman seal was paramount to execution. And not only that, guards were placed at the entrance of the tomb. Ha. Therefore, anyone who physically would have attempted to go and take that body would have found it impossible. But on the third day, death was no longer able to hold him. The Apostles' Creed tells us that he descended into the abyss of heaven, into hell. And there in hell, not only did Jesus take the keys of death and Hades from the devil, but the devil lost every power that he had over you in the name of Jesus. On the third day, the tomb was empty because the stone was rolled away. They had placed a stone in front of the tomb so that Jesus would remain in that tomb. But when the fullness of time was come, God who had promised his son that he would not leave his soul in Hades, nor for his body to see corruption, the stone was rolled away. 
Tell your neighbor today your stone is rolling away. And you see, and not only that, when Jesus arose, he was seen by Mary Magdalene. He was seen by the other Marys, by the other women, and two disciples who were on the way to Emmaus. As they were talking, Jesus himself joined their company and began to talk with them, asking them if they understood the things that they were saying. And when Jesus revealed himself unto them, the Bible says, their eyes were opened. Today, may the Lord open our eyes to the truth of the resurrection in the name of Jesus. Then he appeared to the 11 disciples in Galilee. And this time when Jesus appeared, and the Bible tells us, John 20, 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, a Sunday like today, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. Today, may the source of every fear over your life be broken in the name of Jesus. You see, the essence of the resurrection is to give you power over fear. Because Jesus lives, you can face tomorrow. Because Jesus is seated on the throne, there is hope for you in the name of Jesus. But the Bible tells us, when Thomas was told, that whilst we were in a room shivering for fear, Jesus appeared. No, oh, what are you talking about? And today there are so many people who don't believe in the resurrection. But you know, Thomas says something which though very doubtful, in a way has helped so many skepticals. Thomas said to them, John 20, 25, unless I see, his hands and the prints of the nail. In other words, not until I see where the nails were thrust through and put my finger into the print of those nails and put my hand on the side that was pierced because in three days, there's no way that side, the healing had become complete. I will not believe. Then eight days later, whilst they were in a room, with the doors shut, John 20, 27, the Bible tells us, then Jesus appeared and said to Thomas, today may the Lord speak specifically to somebody who is struggling about Christianity in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody hearing my voice online, may the Lord appear to you, Amen. who does not understand the precepts of the faith. John 20, 27, the Bible said, Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here. In other words, he said, Bring your finger and look at my hands. And reach your hand here and put it into my side. Thomas, do not be unbelieving, but believing. We have the witness in our hearts. You see, blessed are those who have not seen and believed. The truth about you and I who have put our faith in the living God is that even though we have not seen the resurrected Lord physically, spiritually, and in our hearts we have seen him. Because we have seen the transformed life that he has given unto us. We have seen the hope that he has given unto us. We are witnesses to the fact that in the midst of our challenges, he is the one who suits our pain. And gives us hope. We have come to know him. The living God. And not only did he appear to this. But he appeared to 500 people at one time. This is an evidence that demands a verdict. You see. In every civilized nation. When a person is taken to court. That court is not a kangaroo court. It is not where the judges have already made their minds. They ask you, what is your case? Pam, guilty. No. They will allow you to put your case forward. Then they will allow you to bring your witnesses. That is why in a country like the United Kingdom, somebody can be whoever he is and get away with it. You know who I'm talking about. You can't deport him. Because here the law works. I can see somewhere they would have put it. Yeah. 
But you see here, the law works. You must thank God for where you are. <laughs> this is an evidence that demands a verdict. In a law court, you bring your witnesses. And here are 500 people who saw him at the same time. Here are disciples who were in a room. He appeared unto them. Here are women who were going to the womb to the tomb, he appeared on the witnesses are such that scripture is such that and the Bible says that he showed himself to many with so many infallible proofs that today you and I must make a decision well in the mighty name of Jesus. And you know what the good news is that Jesus still appears to people. I know imams who have become Christians because Jesus appeared to them. May he continue to appear to them in the name of Jesus. I know atheists who have literally abandoned their atheistic beliefs because Jesus appeared unto them. I pray in the name of Jesus that when you begin to read your word, may Jesus himself appear in the pages of, of your Bible as he makes himself clear to you. In the name of Jesus. There are so many ways Jesus can appear. He can appear physically. He can appear as you study the word. Jesus, because he, because he is the word, he, be, he can become so real that it will seem as if he is talking to you. From today when you read the scriptures, may you hear Jesus speaking to you. Yeah. I didn't hear you. I said may you hear Jesus speaking to you because just a word from him will transform your life. Amen. Glory to God. He still appears to many physically and spiritually. Jesus is alive. And his life is the essence of the Christian experience. The, the resurrection of Jesus changes everything. Christianity begins where other religions end with the resurrection from the tomb. The truth about many other religions is that they point many to a founder. Christianity, of course, also points us to a founder, Jesus himself. But the graves of all these other religions are still there. But only Christianity points to an empty tomb. You see, because death could not hold him captive. For even in the grave, Lord. That is why there is hope for us that because he lives irrespective of the challenges we find ourselves there is hope for us in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus lives there is hope. Because Jesus lives it is not over for you. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. It is not over. Because he lives and he watches over you with a Passionate, everlasting love. A love that is so deep that he shed his own blood for you and for me. You see, the truth is that some tombs are famous because of whom they contain. And there is a tomb in Russia. People visit that tomb because of what it contains. There are so many tombs around us that from from Arlington in the United States, in Virginia, where the American presidents are buried, famous presidents, their graves are there. Therefore, they did well. They served their nations well. People visit them. And so many tombs are famous simply because of the person that is contained in that tomb. But you see, when it comes to Jesus, the tomb of Jesus is also so extremely famous because of who it does not contain. I have been privileged to be, to go to the garden tomb two times in Jerusalem. And what an honor to see the empty tomb. And I can't wait in June. Again. When you enter into that tomb, something happens to you. Not, not, not only does the significance of the resurrection become real, but something, something. He is alive. Millions of visitors each year go to the garden tomb 
because of who is not in the tomb, but because of who is risen. Glory to God. I pray that on this resurrection morning, may everything that is dead in your life receive a fresh resurrection in the name of Jesus. May your health come back and receive a fresh resurrection in the name of Jesus. May the resurrection power touch your body and begin to heal every pain, every sickness that runs through your blood stream right now in the name of Jesus. May any cells in your body that is weakened receive resurrection power and begin to function properly in the name of Jesus. It is said about cancer that for many cancerous cells, when they enter your bloodstream, for some of them they are so radical that at times before they discover them, it has already caused some damage. I stand here and I declare in the name of Jesus that any cell that God has not placed in your body. By the blood of the everlasting covenant, I cancel its effect over your life today in the name of Jesus. May the resurrection power begin to move through your body from the crowns of your head to the soles of your feet. May the bondage breaker, the king of kings and the lord of lords, the one who came to shed his blood died and rose again. May that resurrection power wipe your tears in the name of Jesus. Oh, what does the resurrection mean to us? May your dream come alive. I didn't hear you. May any dream that God gave to you be resurrected. May the business that God gave to you which seems to be dying, may it be resurrected in the name of Jesus. May the relationship with your spouse, a marriage that seems to be dying of, may that marriage this morning receive resurrection power. A marriage that is weakened, where the love of the man has grown dim and the respect of the woman has become questionable, receive resurrection power for renewal this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray that there will be a resurrection of a passion and a zeal to serve God. May the hope of revival be resurrected again in our hearts in the name of Jesus. May the passion for the first love of God be resurrected in the name of Jesus. May, may, may the resurrection power move through our children and our young ones and give them a supernatural zeal that will let them take the touch of the fire of the Holy Ghost and ignite their classrooms, ignite their schools, ignite their communities, and ignite their nation for the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. May the resurrection power begin to work over our lives. Pastor Kinsley, what does the resurrection mean to us? Maybe just four, briefly. One, the resurrection means that our salvation or our redemption is complete. It guarantees the effectiveness of his redemptive work. Romans 6, 4 tells us, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus died and rose unto newness of life, those of us that have believed in him, the Bible tells us that, you see, when you come to know Christ, you die with him. And just as Jesus was raised from the dead, you rise unto newness of life with him. And this is perfectly demonstrated during baptisms. This is a baptismal pool. As you stand in the baptismal pool, what you are saying is that I am identifying myself with the death of Jesus, with the crucifixion. And because he bore the pain, you are not bearing any pain. And as you go into the water, you are partaking in the burial of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as you are lifted up out of the water, 
you are rising unto newness of life. That is why many people, when they come out of the pool, they receive gifts and they began to do so many things for the Lord in the name of Jesus. Baptism is so important. But the essence of the resurrection is that it fortifies our redemption in the name of Jesus. It makes our redemption complete. Because if Jesus had not died, if Jesus had not risen from the dead, our faith would have been in vain. If Jesus was not risen, Christianity would have died in its tracks. The only reason, the major reason why your faith is real is that he is risen. 1 Corinthians 15, 17, Paul writes to the Corinthians and says, If Christ is not risen, your faith is futile, then you are still in your sins but he is risen not only to make our salvation complete but in doing so he also proves that he is the son of god jesus says this is a commandment i have received of my father i lay down my life and i pick it up again therefore when Pilate said to him when he when Pilate questioned him and Jesus would not answer, Pilate said to him, don't you know that I have authority over you? Jesus made it quite clear. You have no authority except that which is given to you from above. But this is the authority that I have received of my father. I lay down my life and I take it up again. Jesus laid his life for you and for me. Jesus was resurrected again that our faith in him might become complete in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You see, the three aspects of our salvation is that three terms theologians love to use is that we are justified. Justified means being declared not guilty. Because of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, once you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, God, before God, you are declared not guilty. Your sins in the past, your present and your future sins are declared null and void. Of course, if you sin willfully, you will bear the consequences. But the truth is that your past is totally forgiven as if you have done no sin at all before God. The Bible says, if a person is in Christ, he is a new creature. He becomes a new creature. The old passes away. And all things become soon. So the first word theologians use is the word justification. And the second word they use is the word sanctification. Sanctification simply means being sanctified, being set apart. And daily, the word of God sanctifies us. That as we come to church and hear his word, as we go into a discipleship, class and study to be conformed into the image of God of the Lord as the blood of Jesus cleanses us as we confess our sins daily daily we are being cleansed set apart and being cleansed daily for his use but the last word theologians use is the word glorification which simply means that a day is coming when all strive and all struggles and all temptations and pain shall cease. And we shall see him just as he is. And we shall be like him. And the Bible says, whoever has this hope purifies himself. So the first thing that the resurrection does for us or means to us is that our redemption becomes complete. Number two, what the resurrection does for us Tell your neighbor he's risen. Means that <coughs> the resurrection also means that nothing is impossible or too hard for the Lord. If God raised Jesus, there is nothing that he will not be able to raise in your life. As chapter 2 verse 24, the Bible says, Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held but it was not possible for death to hold Jesus because Jesus is God. And with God, all things are possible. And if your faith is in him, the fact that Jesus died physically and was buried, blood and water came from his side and rose physically and was seen by him. Nothing is impossible with God. 
Glory to God. I was reading the news yesterday on the internet of what happened in a hotel in Zimbabwe. A young lady who does not know the Lord and plies her trade as a prostitute apparently had gone into whatever with a man and unfortunately for her, she collapsed and died. So they called the undertakers, then uh, the, the, the ambulance. So they came with this metal coffin, of course. So they lifted him, bam. Just as she hit the coffin, she woke up. The, the, the news was so interesting. The ambulance men began to run for their lives. The hotel staff started writing, running for their lives. They are afraid of a corpse. That has come back to life. Can you imagine what will happen when Jesus appears? When the grave shall open. And those that have died in the Lord. My mom will come out. My dad will come out. My brother will come out. My sister will come out. Many members of TBC who have gone ahead of us will come out in the name of Jesus. But on that day it will be so great because we shall receive glorified bodies. And we look forward to that in the name of Jesus. The resurrection means that with God nothing is impossible. Because Jesus holds, he says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And I give that authority back unto you to tread upon serpents, upon scorpions, and upon all the powers of the enemies. And nothing shall by enemies harm you in the name of Jesus. You see, Colossians, Paul writes to the Colossians and says, Jesus, having disarmed, he literally disarmed, you know, when a, a soldier is disarmed, is being disarmed or disarmed with, with a superior army, the first thing they do is that they lift their hands. Because you dare not put your hands up. And when they want to surrender, they take whatever is white and they wave, I surrender. And 2,000 years ago, Jesus disarmed principalities and powers and, powers and made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it, Colossians 2.15. What the Bible is telling us is that when Jesus died and rose again, the very armor of deception that the devil trusted in, that armor of ancestral curses that the devil trusted in, Jesus disarmed him of all those powers. That is why you as a child of God must not be afraid of any ancestral curse or any witch or demon in the name of Jesus. Because when Jesus arose, the resurrection power. Ha. You know, God is a merciful God. The essence of these ancestral curses that people have come to fear so much is simply because of idolatry. You see, in all developing countries, witchcraft is dirty. But here, in the Western world, it's in Thai. And quote, very well dressed. But when you go to Latin America and Africa and Asia, throwing all these kind of things over themselves, they have no power over you in the name of Jesus. They will chant and chant and chant and chant and chant. He's a liar. If you know the one you have come to believe, glory to God. But, 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 but the, tr the trend that I have seen and keeps on increasing is that you will find out that almost people who have not come to know the Lord well, you will see that because their ancestors were idolaters and worshipped idols, you always find a trend that is common in that family. Is somebody with me? I was talking to a woman in the, the church back in Africa from Cameroon. It's everywhere. The pastor in her family at 38, no matter what you do, you have to die. I said, you won't die. Because <coughs> when Jesus said it is finished, he paid that price for you. Whatever you may call it that was hanging over your head, Jesus removed it. 
when the crown of thorns was placed over his head, the blood was so much that it took away and destroyed and made a public spectacle. In other words, Jesus disgraced the devil over your life. Amen. That is why in your family, when you come to know Christ, if in the past you were not regarded, now they look at you, when they want to make important decisions, they will say that not until you come, we are not talking in the name of Jesus. When someone's brothers were lined up and he was keeping the sheep, Samuel made it quite clear, are these all your children? He said, there is but one who is ready, keeping the sheep. He says, not, we will not sit down until he comes. You see, that is the essence of what Christ has made you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because now your life is hidden with God in Christ. God will not give you as a prey to the teeth of the enemy in the name of Jesus. So you will find that in some, you will see that in some families, Either the women never get good marriages, or in some families, the men, I, and I know some families, no matter who you, you are, if you are a man, you are going away. I reverse it in the name of Jesus. So, hey. Listen, you know what? You must be serious with your faith. The only thing the devil fears, and some of us as parents, we must stand up for our children. Because these electronics, they are real. The only thing they fear is the name Jesus. That is why if you have come to know Christ, stand firm in that liberty with which Christ has said. You see, don't let your Christianity today, you are here, the next day you are here, and pastor said this, and so I'm angry, I won't come to tell you. Pastor. If you live your life like that, you live yourself as a prey to the enemy. The Bible made it quite clear. Jesus said that in this world, you will have many tribulations. Some of the tribulations are the offenses and the disappointments of people. But Jesus says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Amen. Glory to God. And, and, and the devil knows that because he can't get you, the only way he can do, you see, if, uh, if these lions want to catch a game, the first thing they have to do is to frighten the head and isolate one. And they normally love the young ones. So they isolate the young one that will panic and run away from the mom or dad. Then they get it. And all what the devil does is to cause you eh, to take offense and lose that covering for your children. But man, as you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I see a new army rising up that are so radical with the things of God, they will not allow themselves to be discouraged. They will not be moved because they've made a quality decision to work with Christ. And they know that Jesus is alive. And as such, they stand secure in him in the name of Jesus. The resurrection proves that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Tell your neighbor, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Listen, beloved, there is no sin, there is no criminal so hard in this world that Jesus can save. There is no atheist so evil in this world that the blood can, the blood can break. There is nothing, ah, Lord God, Jeremiah said, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power, is there anything too hard for thee? Everyone in life has a past. Only Jesus is able to go into your past, take that past, forgive you, and make you new. Because only he is the same yesterday, today, and forever the same. And he is alive. And he says, I should tell you, he loves you. Yeah. Ha. Ha. This morning, be set free. Amen. But the third thing the resurrection does for us, or that it means to us, is that because of the resurrection, we have an advocate in heaven. We have an intercessor. 
When Jesus arose from the dead, he ascended to the Father and offered himself as the only adequate sacrifice for all mankind. Right now, as I stand here, he sits at the right hand side of the Father God Almighty and he's interceding for you. That is why he can say to you, wipe your tears. That is why he can say to you, it is not over. That is why he is saying to you, that sickness will not kill you. That is why he is saying to you, it does not matter what they are saying about you. Let them throw things at you. My blood will wash it. It will not stick in the name of Jesus. Hey, as for titles, we pastors, the titles we've received. Hey. One of the days we went to the orphanage and all the hotels in the area were full. I'm saying, people are saying I've built a five-star hotel. And now look at me now. We can't even get a hotel to sleep in. Eh? People should just show me where my five-star hotel is. Are you with me? And, and understand that you have an advocate in heaven. So be careful as a... Hey, you know what? Hmm. At times you want to talk to the church like brothers and sisters. Amen. Listen, nobody in this world will talk about you if you are going nowhere. If people don't talk about you, it means you don't matter. Huh? It means you are going nowhere. Ah, now who, who wastes their time on a mad person? They just point at him and go. But if you are going somewhere, if you are making an impact, if you are making a difference, uh, be ready. They will say all manner of things about you, but let them say, it, there is only one who declares and stands. And what only God has said about your life will surely come to pass in the name of Jesus. Huh. The writer of Hebrews tells us, Hebrews 7, 23 through to 25, also there were many priests talking about the priests that have come and gone, but because they were prevented by death from continuing, but he, because he continues forever, has an unchangeable priesthood, therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for us. What a joy to know that Jesus is praying for you. What a joy to know that when the accuser of the brethren brings your accusation before God, Jesus stands up and says, Father, for this purpose I died. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds. In a believer's ear, that Jesus, the King of kings, my prophet, my priest, and king, my Lord, my life, my way, and my end, can accept my praise because I know he's interceding for me. When Peter rebuked Jesus about his death, in Luke 22, 31, 32, can I have that on the board quickly? And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you. And, and I like that sentence. Satan has what? Asked. Or requested. Listen. The devil can't do anything to you without permission. That is very strong to be taken, isn't it? Huh? Uncle Alex, you have to buy them Apple Mac laptops at the back. Because that, they are, they are, it's too slow. No, they bought the wrong one. Let them take that one and take an Apple Mac. Well, oh, don't take it off. Why? It's gone. <laughs> Have I told you I need your money? Luke 22, 31 to 32. <laughs> 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has what? Ah, 
asked for you. Satan has asked. Who will Satan ask permission from apart from the Lord? Because there's no devil like that wicked devil. See, Satan has asked for you that he may what? Sift you as sweet. 32. You see what you want? You know how to sift? <clears throat> Just said to destroy your life. <laughs> but I have prayed for you ha, that your faith should not what? Fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Glory to God. The Lord will never give you as a prey to the feet of the enemy. Never in the name of Jesus. Any challenge that you go through, there is a lesson in it. Learn that lesson and move on in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. What a joy to know that he makes intercession. But finally, the resurrection also helps us believers to know that our inheritance in heaven is assured. First Peter 3, For blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Oh, listen. We have an inheritance and we have a home. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For I go to prepare a place for you. Why? Because in my father's house there are many mansions. Therefore, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I am finished, I will come and take you with me. So that where I am, there you might be also. And all this time, Jesus is preparing a place for us. A place where the walls are made of jasper and the streets are made of gold. When the Bible talks about mansion, John 14 verse 1 to 2, Jesus says, In my father's house are many what? You know, I've been privileged to see some stunning buildings in Dubai. Uh, when I say, use the word stunning, I mean stunning. And there is a building in Dubai, it is twisted. One day I'll preach on those foundations. Then they have a seven-star hotel. And in that hotel, a cup of tea costs $220. <laughs> and before you go in to drink that tea, you have to book an appointment. Of course, I don't have $220 for a cup of tea, but at least I can drive past and look at the hotel. <laughs> And I am telling you that it is a beautiful hotel. But the Bible says that in my father's house are many... Listen, the architect who designed that hotel, the tallest building, uh, the, the Burj Khalifa, is in Dubai. The lift, it takes 1.8 seconds to take you to the 160th floor. Hey, what, what? Can you believe this? Whoosh, you are there. <laughs> the speed of light. When I heard it, I said, no, 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 this can't be possible. This can't be possible. But they know that in the next 50 years, their oil will run out. So wisely, what they are doing is to invest the resources of today so that Dubai will become a future tourist nation. So that after the oil runs out, their children's children will live on the tourism. Are you with me? And as I they are building beautiful buildings. And you dare not throw papers on the floor. Of, you won't, if, it won't even cross your mind to steal in Dubai. Because Big Brother is watching you. And there, you know, the hand that steals, you know what will happen to that hand. So there nobody steals. <laughs> Glory to God. But the point I'm making is this. All those buildings, the architects are from the UK, from France, from uh, uh, Italy, and from the United States of America. But all these architects were created by someone. 
and the king of kings, the lord of lords, who made the architect, who designed the buildings in Dubai himself, is building you a mansion. And I am telling you that one day we will know that heaven is real. That is why this morning I want to encourage you that let your faith in the Lord be solid. Because faithful is he that has promised and he will keep his word in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people shall say, Amen. Shall we pray? Let's pray.